Here are the topics we'll discuss in this lesson. We'll define callback verification, and we'll explain how it works to help block messages that have spoofed addresses. We'll show you how to enable callback verification in Security Gateway, and how to configure Security Gateway to handle messages that fail callback verification. We'll discuss the potential drawbacks of callback verification, and then we'll show you examples of how to identify callback verification activity in the message SMTP transcripts and logs. Okay, let's talk about callback verification, which you'll find in Security Gateway, under the Security menu, under the anti-spoofing section located right here. Callback verification is a security measure that helps prevent spoofing by checking to see if the email address passed in the mail from command is an actual valid address or user on that sending mail server. The way it works is it connects to the MX record, the MX DNS record of the domain that was passed in that mail from command uh, to verify if the account exists on that particular server. So in other words, and if we use one of the log files in Security Gateway as an example, it will look for the address passed in this command. For example, this is a connection that is uh, coming into my Security Gateway server. Uh, and they are claiming to be from billsmith.example.edu. So callback verification verifies the email address in this command, the uh, mail from command. So this is how it works. Somebody sends an email address to your mail server or to your domain, in this case, uh, Security Gateway. Say, for example, from john at example.com. Your mail server or gateway when doing an SMTP callback verification, looks up the MX record of the domain passed in the mail from command. So it connects to DNS and it looks for the MX record for the domain, in this case, example.com. When it finds it, it tries to connect to that mail server that was passed in the MX record lookup and then verify if the account exists on the server that was listed in the MX record for that domain. And the way it works is it can work in one of two ways. It can either use a command called VRFY, which is a shorter, easier process that simply issues the VRFY command. And if the server you are connecting to supports the VRFY command, then it can respond with more information letting you know that the address is valid or that it is invalid. Here's an example of what that command might look like. In my security gateway, I am uh, protecting a uh, domain called example.com and I get an email from genie.johnson at example.edu. So then I can connect to the mail server for example.edu with a VRFY command to see if that address exists on that server. And then if that server supports the VRFY command, it can respond in one of two ways. It can respond with a confirmation such as this one saying it found the address, or if say it's a spammer or an invalid address that is trying to send to your server, you can verify that again by sending the VRFY command to look up that address and then because the address is not valid in this case, that server can then respond with this type of message, 550 did not find Jenny Johnson at spam domain or example.com, for example. So that's how it works using the VRFY command. Now if the VRFY command is not supported, and again a lot of mail servers and gateways do not support the VRFY command because there are some security uh, implications which I'll talk about here shortly but if it does not support the VRFY command then you, your security gateway would connect to that server as if it were trying to send a test message to that server addressed to the purported uh, address that came in the original message and that looks like this in the security gateway log so this CBV that stands for callback verification so security gateway uh, is trying to connect to this IP address on port 25 and then the connection is established and then of course you've got the standard protocol commands that you'll find in every mail session and then security gateway will try to issue a RCPT2 command in other words 
try to act as though it is sending a message to that address. And then the server we're connecting to can then either respond with recipient OK or an error message saying the address uh, does not exist. So that's the longer way to do it when the VRFY command is not supported. Notice, by the way, that you can determine whether or not VRFY is supported by the server you are connecting to that you're performing the callback verification on. Because when you when your security gateway or mail server issues a an EHLO command, extended hello, it's basically an extended version of HELO, then the server you're connecting to will respond using all of these 250 lines with all of the various what we call ESMTP uh, commands that it supports. And one of them, for example, would be VRFY if that feature is enabled. A lot of times it is not. So now back to our animation, where we left off was the receiving server, or in this case your security gateway, looks up the MX record on the domain passed in the mail from command, tries to connect to it to see if the address is valid. And if it determines that the address is valid, then Security Gateway can accept the message and then pass it on to the, uh, to the mail server for that domain. So what happens if somebody spoofs the domain and Security Gateway receives a message from that spoofed address that was sent from another mail server, for example, a, a server that was taken over by a spam bot or that might have some malware on it that turned it into a spam uh, a, a machine that was commandeered by cyber criminals and spammers. Well, in this case, again, Security Gateway would perform the lookup on the sending address using the VRFY command. And if the address is not valid, in this case, uh, someone at example.com does not exist on that sending server, then Security Gateway knows that the message was spoofed and can then reject the message. So now that we've discussed the conceptuals, let's talk about how to set that up in Security Gateway. So again, if we go to the Security menu, under Anti-Spoofing, Callback Verification right here, we check this box to enable Callback Verification to verify senders of email messages. Now keep in mind with a lot of settings in Security Gateway that these settings can be configured on a global or per domain basis using the drop-down menu at the top right-hand corner here. So we check the box to use callback verification. You can also check this box to try the VRFY command first if it is supported by the sending mail server. If VRFY is not supported, then Security Gateway will try to uh, reconnect to that server and establish a mail session to try to, to send a test message to see if the address exists. And it will do that from the address that you specify here, by default it would be the postmaster, for example. And you can also check this box to try a null from address. If a domain is not specified, for example, you can, you can append the recipient's domain here. Some servers may or may not accept a null from address, so this would be optional. And then you have options below that tell you how to configure Security Gateway to handle messages, or excuse me, senders that fail callback verification. In other words, you can refuse the message quarantine the message, accept the message, and then optionally tag the message subject with a series of characters, and also optionally add a given number of points to the message's score. So if you use this option to tag the subject, then downstream in the delivery process, a content filter on the mail server could be configured to look for that tag in the message subject and then filter it on the server. And you do have some exceptions on the bottom here. You can exclude messages from whitelisted senders or messages from authenticated sessions. Now, there are some drawbacks to callback verification, which is why this feature is disabled by default. For example, there are some servers that use gray listing and that uh, therefore replies will be delayed. So you know, gray listing is another anti-spam mechanism that deliberately slows down a connection or basically refuses the initial connection until a period of time has elapsed. So that can cause some delays. Another situation that you can encounter is that due to misconfigurations on mail servers and gateways, you might run into a situation where the envelope from address, for example, might be misconfigured on the sending server. And when that happens, callback verification does not perform the way it was intended. 
And also one more drawback is that callback verification does not have any effect if a spammer spoofs a real email address or uses the null bounce address. So keep those things in mind, but those are the reasons why this feature is disabled by default in Security Gateway. So if we go to the logs in Security Gateway, I'll show you an example of what it looks like when a message fails callback verification. And we've got a few examples here. And as you can see, these were quarantined. So we'll double click on one. And you can see everything is nicely color coded so you can see what happened. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the callback verification section, which begins right here, executing callback verification. And Security Gateway attempted to connect to this host. A connection was established. And then it went through the various protocol commands to verify if the address existed. So for example, it tried to verify this address that we have highlighted right here. And the server we are connecting to replied that that address does not exist, recipient unknown. So the message was terminated, or excuse me, the session was terminated and callback verification resulted in a fail. And therefore the message was counted as spam and one point was added to the message score and then callback verification terminated right here.